Okay, go ahead. Uh, first question um, from Joe Marion. Go ahead. Michael Canaro, can you address that? Hold on a second. Right. Okay, Mike, go ahead. I, I prefer a VNA on the front end because the data migration has been done already. They have access, uh, they, they have experience with it. A VNA implementation is not a short-term implementation. A VNA implementation can easily take you a year with data migration taking a large part of that. So my preference is to do it on the front end as Michael Ryan uh, did here. He did it on the fly, sort of on the back end. You can do it either way. Uh, it's a question of personal preference. My preference for my clients is to do it on the front end. I have a client of mine now on the West Coast that is implementing a VNA as the first part of tying in several imaging centers. Uh, Mike Ryan, do you care to comment on that? Um, you know, I, I, like I said in hours, and I'm not sure what, all things being equal, yes, you'd like to have your archive, all your ducks in a row and a VNA in place and then bring in whatever other elements you have. And if the, if the questioner meant uh, front end or back end as to who do you store your images to, again, that's going to vary by facility and site. So I'm not sure what the uh, context was. Uh, but uh, it, as to whether you want your VNA front end as far as implementation, uh, if you have a choice to stagger implementation, yes, I'd say VNA first. Uh, if you're asking uh, to whom to store, that's uh, going to depend on your facility's requirements. Yeah, to, so, so to, clar okay. to clarify that yeah. even more uh -huh. so, the, the data needs to go into the packs first. The VNA really should go in after the fact. Again, if the VNA is down or there are any issues, uh, you definitely need to keep all of your, your data into the packs initially. I typically configure it with at least two years local cache and then go to the, the VNA after the fact. Not uh, I, I, I thought the question was, you know, do you do the, the VNA before you implement the packs or afterwards. So yes, to, to that to that extent, definitely goes into the first to the packs and then to the VNA, not to the VNA and into the packs. Yeah. So next question, Michael Ryan uh, is from David. Uh, David Clooney says, uh, what uh, what is the uh, extent of the radiology viewing uh, in the enterprise viewer? So in other words, do you use the enterprise viewer for primary radiology viewing as well? It's one uh, one application, David, for uh, enterprise, you know, enterprise desktop uh, and the radiologist. It's not a zero footprint uh, viewer that we have employed. It's a very it's a very small footprint. Uh, the it's the exact same viewer. So if we have uh, clinical users that want enhanced capabilities, uh, say a neurosurgeon or an orthopod, what have you. Uh, we can provide that via whatever keys they would require. But it's the exact same viewer that the radiologists use. Uh, it's on a separate, it's not on the enterprise network, so it's on a, on a uh, biomedical or imaging-centric uh, network separate from the uh, enterprise network, if that answers your question. Oh, um, I do have a question for Mike Canavo. Um, you said that it's more expensive. It's kind of opposite from what I would expect. The, for the deconstructor packs, purchasing price will be less expensive because you can really pick and choose. Can you comment on that? Well, again, keep in mind most of the PAGS vendors are, are out there selling turnkey solutions. I mean, reasonably you're looking at, at uh, discount levels of a minimum 65-70% off of list price. So a, a turnkey PAG solution from a vendor is going to be significantly less then okay. tying the independent uh, uh, components together from, from the different vendors. You also have your, your uh, integration cost, your testing cost, your internal support cost, things of that sort. So, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I had also a question for, for Mike Ryan. So, one of the major issues is cleaning up the data, um, having consistent uh, body part descriptions, study description, whatever. Um, I've heard people saying, well, RATLEX is a good solution. What is it that, what is the standard or semi-standard that you picked? I mean, what is the standard that you picked for standardizing the body parts and the uh, CS description? 
Well, the body part examined in, in uh, you know, the DICOM field, uh, it's kind of, we actually just reinvented it for our purposes. Well, I shouldn't say reinvented it, but uh, uh, I think there's something listed like uh, 14 or something body parts in the DICOM standard or something like that, but you can write as many as you want. So what we did was when we pull them back, we just do an evaluation of the of the uh, study description, and uh, if it was uh, had chest, or we could determine from the study description that it was a chest or an abdomen or what have you, we'd be given a study description of, of chest or abdomen in the body part examined. Um, and as far as the standardization of uh, study descriptions in the in the VA, it starts in our Vista system, and uh, we really. We tried a number of years back to standardize our naming conventions across the division or the enterprise with some success, but we found that when we genericized or, you know, made, came with generic uh, study descriptions, it didn't really meet our needs as far as uh, indicating to the consumer what, you know, what exactly the study was. I mean, you can do a, a CT abdomen for various reasons. Uh, um, you know, it, we just found that uh, keeping the study descriptions overly generic uh, can be a problem. Making them too specific can be a problem. So, uh, Herman, I, I don't have a, an easy answer for that. I, I just know that uh, the body part examined, we were seeing a, a, a fair amount of other for body part examined. Again, that comes back, you know, at your modality acquisition. If it's not mapped correctly or if it can't, you know, see how it's mapped. Some of this stuff uh, from, from years ago, slip through, and then when you pull the studies back, you go, well, what is it? You know, you can't tell by the body part. We can't hang it by the body part. Okay. Okay, there's another question that just came in uh, about um, why do we really need uh, both a PACS and a VNA archive? Uh, because if your enterprise viewer, you know, has full radio functionality. And as a matter of fact, um, if I look at your diagram, uh, Michael Ryan, if you look at your diagram, you, you actually don't have a PAX anymore. I mean, you have a, a VNA uh, that serves as your PAX core. Um, so, uh, Mike Canavo, what do you think? Why do we still, would you, would you recommend still having a separate PAX and a VNA? Or in the case of Mike Ryan, says, okay, no, uh, we don't necessarily need the, 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 the traditional PAX anymore. Can you comment on that, uh, Michael? Well, I don't, I don't see the the vendor portion of the archive as, as lasting for a, a long period of time. There's too much proprietary that goes on within a vendor-specific archive. And VNAs eliminate any of the specificity that uh, a particular vendor may put in their, their particular archive. It neutralizes it, which is the in and vendor neutral archive, and allows you to basically deconnect and reconnect to any other packs that you want somewhere down the road without having to go through the, the added expense and time of doing data migration and, and the like. So uh, VNA uh, definitely uh, is, is, is crucial. Uh, why do we need packs? 80% uh, of the hospitals in the United States are below 200 beds. And most of those, I would probably say the vast majority of those don't have the resources to go ahead and do a, a full deconstructed PACS at this point in time. That said, as part of the enterprise, if they're part of an HCA or a Kaiser or a Tenet or a CHC or any other chain, if we're doing it enterprise-wide and we have the technical resources to do it internally, by all means, then we can consider it. But right now and probably for the next two to three years, most deconstructed PACs will be uh, for the, the much larger facilities that have the, the internal resources to make it happen. Mike Ryan, do you want to comment on that? Or Herman, either one? Mike? Well, um, I, you know, from what I hear in the, in the industry outside of government space, you know, what we hear is that there are a lot of mergers and acquisitions going on. So we can imagine that uh, we have to find a way to, to tie those together. And as they bring those things together, I think it can start to make sense that we, we can uh, uh, standardize some of our procedures. But in, in areas where it's not standardized, uh, uh, deconstructing, uh, you know, having a work list that can tie those things together, a uh, viewer that can access multiple VNAs uh, or, you know, something to that effect. Yeah, it makes sense in the larger larger organizations. I, I agree with uh, with uh, the PAXman, though, that uh, uh, it 
would be, I think, perhaps a challenge in some of the smaller organizations, not not unachievable, but perhaps more of a challenge, both budgetary and personnel-wise. So, so the bottom line is that <clears throat> you could do without the traditional packs, just go full-blown V&A, enterprise view and everything, but it's not for everyone. Um, another question uh, came in, uh, and again for Mike Ryan, um, to what extent have you integrated some of the special applications on your viewers, like orthopedic templating and some of the other ones? In uh, our enterprise, we prior to this, uh, we had gone with uh, uh, OrthoView for orthopedic templating, uh, and that was in place. Uh, you know, they they had partnered uh, with Brit, and and so they were integrated with Brit. We we kept uh, OrthoView and. Uh, uh, we can launch OrthoView from within our uh, uh, enterprise viewer. Um, okay. That's how we manage the orthopedic template. Okay. And any other special applications? Do you need to do Fusion? I, I show you do the 3D in a separate viewer anyway, but uh, do you have any other special applications? Well, the uh, Fusion viewing or, or interpreting uh, is varies across the enterprise. Uh, we uh, I'm sorry, the vendor's going to hate me, but the name escapes me. Out of Michigan, uh, in Iowa City, we, we primarily used, and I, I think uh, uh, in Minneapolis uh, they might uh, do the fusion view, uh, interpreting uh, interpretation right off of the workstation. And uh, the, I think they had at the time last time I was up there at Phillips. Uh, our viewer can manage uh, fused studies, but if you're if your uh, providers, your 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 radiologists and med physicians are comfortable. If the solution in place, they tend to stay. That's the place. Okay, I, I think um, any closing comments? I think I, have, I don't see any more questions. Any any closing comments from? Let's let's go, Mike Ryan first. Um, um. Well, um, for for us, uh, like I mentioned in the prequel part, we found that uh, we found some niche vendors that were able to meet our needs and. Uh, it gave us the wherewithal to feel like we could manage a deconstructed patch. We felt like we had the internal expertise with that we could make this work. Um, uh, we kind of came into that conclusion because in the VA, you heard me mention, well, there's there's budget challenges, there's timeline challenges. Uh, part that's part of what uh, induced us to go deconstructed packs. And I think you know, in three to five years, uh, my colleagues still in the VA will look back and go, yeah, I think we're glad we did this. Uh, it, it suited our needs at the time. There have been challenges, certainly, but uh, I think, uh, in uh, retrospect, it will have be viewed as a good decision. Okay. What about you, Mike and Iowa? Any parting? The, 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 the biggest thing I can say is to make sure that you have a plan of action in place. Know what you what what you have, what you can use, what you need to replace. Uh, sit down with somebody who has an understanding of, of both uh, where you currently are and where you want to go and, and, and look at the different options, look at the different vendors that you have, pull them together, look at the, uh, the requirements, not just from a financial standpoint, from, but from an internal resource standpoint, and make sure you understand everything, put it down on paper, and then go ahead and recognize that it may take you two or three years to get to where you need to go. But uh, as, as Mike has proven uh, within Vision 23, you, you certainly can get there if you, uh, you go ahead and, and, and plan it out. Okay, well, uh, let me uh, to, to, to really thank the audience and, and, and the panel, the, uh, <clears throat> people in the panel for spending the time. And I just want to make sure that, that everybody's aware that, that uh, both Mike, Michael, and myself are always available for addressing any questions. And, um, <laughs> And of course, uh, Michael and Michael are in the consulting business. So, if you have any uh, any uh, uh, any advice that you want to give, and I'm myself in the training business, we do we train people on PACs, PACs administration, diagrams, etc. So, feel free to look at our website. So, again, as closing, Mike, thank you very much for your attendance. We're going to share the slides, post it on YouTube. I found that quite a few people were not able to make it. So, hopefully, we can preserve this this useful discussion for the future. Okay, thank you very much for your attendance and uh, till next time.